Tech demos exist to allow companies to show off their latest graphics systems, engines, or hardware in the best possible light. They're sort of the Facebook profile pictures of video games. As such, there are loads of incredible tech demos out there that never become actual games, but look so good that we'd happily do the front crawl through a sandpaper swimming pool for a chance to play them. Here are seven stunning demonstrations of dazzling technology destined never to become an actual game. A bit like No Man's Sky. I'm just kidding. I hear it's good now. Dateline the Presidio, San Francisco. Back on the home front, those artisans of electronic entertainment at LucasArts have been hard at work researching scientific advancements for the new generation of gaming consoles. Creating realistic physics in video games is tricky. Just ask Goat Simulator. Bet Isaac Newton's regretting inventing physics now. That was just Jane leaving. A key moment in the history of realistic video game physics came in 2007 with the release of the Euphoria animation engine, which could be found powering the hilarious drunkenness in Rockstar games such as Red Dead Redemption and Grand Theft Auto 4. Yeah, man. We're the f best, bro. The first time I ever saw Euphoria in action, though, was in a tech demo released by LucasArts, showing off its naturalistic, reactive physics in a collection of fight scenes starring everyone's favorite slash world's worst archaeologist, Indiana Jones. As this rare color footage shows, these thugs are no match for the pugilistic pounding of our intrepid hero. In this demo, Indy wails on a bunch of thugs in San Francisco's Chinatown using his fists, whip, fruit stands, and parked cars to show just how pretty giving someone a savage beating could look. Look how no two reactions are ever the same! Euphoria gives you that true next generation experience! We've also got improvised weaponry. Of course, the good professor will always first offer his seat to a stranger. And an amazing looking sequence in which Dr. Jones fights off a horde of gang members on top of a moving cable car. Watch out, Dr. Jones! Bad guys just got a whole lot smarter! All this was just a technical demo, but a combat-focused Indiana Jones game makes a lot of sense to me, and based on this tech demo, it looks like the best parts of Sleeping Dogs or Rockstar's The Warriors mixed with indie-style globetrotting high adventure. Watch as Indy sends these troublemakers on a short trip they won't soon forget. Sadly, this game never materialized. It later emerged that this section was intended to be part of a game called Indiana Jones and the Staff of Kings. Indiana Jones and the Staff of Kings did come out, though. It was initially meant to be released for the Xbox 360 and PS3, and then was heavily scaled back to run on the PS2 and Wii, where it did not resemble the cool stuff in the tech demo. The actual version that came out landed about as well as Harrison Ford in a light aircraft. Oh, come on, he was fine. Something's going on here. I need to start looking for answers. And now LucasArts has shut down, and Indiana Jones films are bad, so chances of us getting another great indie game are... Well, about as good as the chances of us getting another great indie film. Still, we'll always have this demo, and everyone can enjoy that. Old Isaac Newton himself couldn't do it better. Except physicists, I guess. The Oculus Rift software comes with a series of brief demos designed to show off the vast potential of VR games which would be great if literally anybody cared about VR games. Dream Deck, as it's called, teleports you to a series of fantastical locations, including a distant planet where you come face to face with a friendly alien. I mean, he seems friendly, but bet you anything he just released an invisible cloud of poisonous spores, and we're now carrying a carnivorous alien baby. I know how these things work. Then there's the demo that shrinks you down to the size of a microscopic bug and allows you to get all up close and personal with its weird compound eyes. Gross. Then Oculus Dream Deck whisks you away to this deserted museum? Huh. I was expecting something a bit more spectacular. Our favourite of the tech demos, though, is this one, which pops you on a platform high above a beautiful, steampunky art deco metropolis. Sort of like Gotham City, only with marginally less risk of being murdered by a clown. I mean, depends where you're playing your Oculus, I suppose. 
The city looks breathtaking and we're desperate to explore it, but after just a couple of minutes of dangling your toes over the edge looking at the regulation airships, the demo fades to black, your steampunk dream is over, and it's back to gluing cogs to a top hat in the boring real world. I haven't been this disappointed since Wild Wild West. Not because of the steampunk stuff, just generally. Hear me, mighty servant. With an offering of light and darkness, do I invoke the ancient pact of binding. Once more, the wicked stand before us, threatening the sacred communion between your realm and mine. First revealed at E3 2012, Agni's philosophy was a tech demo for the Luminous engine, the very same that four years later would go on to power Final Fantasy XV. When the makers of Agni's philosophy first set about making their demo, they started out with a question. What is Final Fantasy? The answer to the question of what is the irreducible essence of a Final Fantasy game turned out not to be chocobos and hairdos, but a melange of science and magic, conflict, crystals, giant mystical creatures and hairdos. That's Agni, the star of Agni's philosophy, which takes place in an undeniably Final Fantasy looking world, where a bunch of mages are performing a ritual during an eclipse led by a Grand Master. We never get the chance to learn his name, because all too soon he is gunned down by baddies. R.I.P. Grand Master. Flash, let's say. The goal of Agni's philosophy was to flex on the rest of the game's industry with real-time graphics that looked as good as pre-rendered CGI. In that respect, we call this jaw-dropping demo a resounding success, running at 60 frames per second, with 1.8 gigs of texture data per frame, and more polygons per character model than there are people in Pittsburgh. And besides the eye-popping magical fireworks and ultra-high definition hair, we were fully on board for the story sketched out by the demo, with its viciously angry hyenas and its viciously angry dragons that you could summon to eat your enemies. Not to mention its juxtaposition of overcrowded, impoverished favelas and a sleek, advanced super city that brings to mind the setting and themes of Final Fantasy VII. Alas, Agni's philosophy was but a four-minute tech demo, and so it would remain, meaning we'll never truly know which philosophy Agni subscribes to. What's the one where you summon an angry dragon and ride around on it? We're going to call it George R. R. Martinism. This is the place. It doesn't look like much. Take a look. The latest tech demo for the game engine Unity knows exactly what it takes to create buzz around a video game in 2019. An amazing jacket. Okay, here we go. But this demo, called The Heretic, has a lot more than just a cool jacket going for it, unbelievably. Clocking in at just under four minutes, it manages to create an intriguing sci-fi world that has us wanting more, even though we know very little about what exactly is going on. For a start, there's this guy who not only has a sweet jacket, but also a robot crow, or crowbot, that he can use for reconnaissance and that provides feedback via some kind of high-tech gauntlet. Mm -hmm. Together, the two open a portal to an amazing-looking sci-fi fantasy world where, presumably, if this were a real game, we'd be able to explore, talk to people, and fight enemies with the same inventive style as our crowbot buddy. This place is actually real. We're imagining something along the lines of the upcoming Cyberpunk 2077, and not just because the main characters look alike. 
Alright, it's a little bit of that, but a deep, involving RPG set in this world is exactly the sort of thing we'd fling money at, given half the chance. It also looks beautiful thanks to, according to the official Heretic page on the Unity website, mysterious things that sound impressive, like high-definition render pipeline and volumetric ambience. I've got no idea what most of these terms mean, to be honest. Ooh, except panini projection. That's when you throw a toasted sandwich at someone. Apparently, this demo is running on a consumer-class desktop PC, although it's possible the Unity guys have a different idea of what the average person has sitting in their office at home. Still, fingers crossed we see more from the Heretic soon, even if it's just to answer what the main character has in that case. Is it a weapon? A different, cooler jacket? Some paninis? Unity, don't leave us hanging! Unreal Engine 3 was the engine that powered, I estimate, 99% of the games on Xbox 360. This de facto bit of tech was in charge of moving polygons around for Gears of War, Bioshock and Batman Arkham Asylum among others. But even after those games in 2011, Epic was still looking to show off to game developers how powerful their code base was. Hey, they never stop advertising Coca-Cola either. So for the 2011 Game Developers Conference, they created the Samaritan demo which was all our rain-slicked, neon-lit Blade Runner dreams in one. Yes, including the one where everyone wears really complicated trench coats. Like we said, cool jackets. Where the Samaritan differs from Blade Runner, however, is that we don't remember Rick Deckard ever turning into the Thing's grey cousin and flicking a lit cigarette at some police officers. Not something we'd suggest you try in real life unless you're keen to switch your bathroom arrangements to a stainless steel toilet in full view of your fellow inmates. Still, our Samaritan friend has no trouble wrecking up this squad of police with a series of crunching attacks that have us picturing a futuristic open world brawler that sadly we'll never get to play. What's more, the demo ends with a tantalising tease of a fight against a giant police spider mech. What did I say about prison toilets? The Samaritan demo must have been successful as a promotion for Epic because hundreds more Unreal Engine 3 games followed, and it's still the engine that powers this year's Mortal Kombat 11, which is beautiful, if you're into that sort of thing. And that, my friends, is the power of advertising. I don't even remember buying this thing. Mark is a program for testing how well your computer can render 3D graphics. It's designed to give your system a graphical workout and report back, like a military fitness test, but with shadow mapping instead of push-ups. The thing is, to put a PC through its paces graphically, you have to come up with some actual graphics. To that end, 3D Mark designs suitable sequences for a computer to render, and sometimes the result is basically the trailer for a game we're perpetually disappointed we'll never get to play. Take Canyon Flight here, which appeared in 3D Mark V, and then again in 3D Mark VI in 2006. It begins with a serene flight aboard a ship slung below a zeppelin, with the sunny, dreamy, airborne, old-timey vibes of Columbia from Bioshock Infinite, but without all the racist raffles and garbage can food. Then things go excitingly sideways, with an attack from a sea monster that makes the Loch Ness Monster look like the Lot Less Monster. Because it makes the Loch Ness Monster look small... a lot less? Look, forget it. Regardless, Canyon Flight brings to mind a beautiful airborne sailing adventure, like a flying sea of thieves, a sky of thieves, if you will. We find the prospect so appealing, we'll even let it off the hook for how this guy's face looks like a rugby player's knee. Come on, it was 2006! We didn't even know what faces looked like until 2011. See also, The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion.
apparently, ray tracing is the next big thing in video games. Whoever this ray is, I hope they're paying him adequately. Though I guess it is only tracing. Probably whoever did the original drawing gets the big bucks. In order to show off its new RTX graphics cards, which feature this brand new technology, NVIDIA collaborated with Industrial Light and & Magic and Unreal to create a Star Wars short film that follows the fortunes of two stormtroopers. I heard Kylo Ren destroyed the one over in D Sector. If you ask me, who's ever in charge of this place should be transferred to Hoth. <laughs> Regardless, this is the shiniest, most photorealistic we've ever seen Star Wars, and while Battlefront 2 was by no means an ugly game, it didn't look anywhere near as convincing as this. And thanks to ray tracing, those white helmets are shinier than Tom Cruise's teeth. The end result ran in real time on Nvidia hardware and was so realistic it looked like a deleted scene from Force Awakens. You know, the sort that George Lucas would have eventually reinserted into a special edition, ruining the pacing. Also, he'd swap one of the stormtroopers for Hayden Christensen and have Jar Jar Binks stumbling into some crates in the background. This demo got us thinking, though, we'd happily play a game that actually puts you in the boots of the humble stormtroopers on a series of photorealistic single-player or co-op missions. So how about it, Ray? You up for some more tracing? No answer. Rude. At least we blend in for once. <gasps> Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and do hit the bell notification icon if you'd like to be alerted every time we put a new video up. And if you'd like to watch something right now, uh, up here we have a video about the dumbest mistakes made by evil corporations, and down here we have a video from Outside Extra about Pokemon that kind of got creepier over time. Please enjoy those. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.